what Jeremy Corbyn does based on that is really his aim is to just upset the Tory party with a view to you know I mean he's not going to single handedly you know remove Theresa May as a leader but ideally he'd want to he'd want to force a general election so that Labour can get in power you know that's why he's very wary about basically stating you know stating what he what he will represent so because of that Theresa May has got to go back to the EU and basically get them to basically negotiate it is not in the European Union's interest in any way to, to, to fucking um, give any ground yeah, with where basically, even if they wanted to help, even if the EU yeah wanted to help and get this resolved, they'd be stupid if they fucking gave any ground on where they are right now, because ultimately, they could give ground, but because there's no support in Parliament, then ultimately the ground that the EU have given, Parliament could then still say no, we're not happy with that, so. Why would you, if you're negotiating one side of the negotiation, why would you give any concession if you know that if you did that, it's not necessarily going to close the deal? All that's going to happen, potentially, is you give a concession, so you give up something, and then the other side can't agree, and then basically says something different. It, it, you know, it, even if you want, even if, you know, you, you, you know you're your friends overall and you want to amic amicably come to a solution you know you're not going to fucking do it if the concession that you make which costs you yeah isn't going to guarantee or at least not necessarily or at least have a good chance of closing the deal but because fucking parliament are undermining everything left right and centre the EU would be stupid to give any concession it would be a fucking joke if they did that. And the problem is that fucking Corbyn is sitting there. You know, you've got, as I say, most of Parliament are Remainers. Corbyn's sitting there where he won't state one way or another, you know, what, what his uh, intention would be or preference would be. Um, so that isn't helping in the slightest. And then you've obviously got the Conservatives, and you've obviously got different viewpoints within the Conservatives. You've got the, 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 the strong Brexiteers, who literally would be happy with no deal, which I would go with. Um, and you've basically got the people who want Theresa May's deal. And you've got the, and you've got the fucking DUP, who basically don't want a backstop. Where basically they can't get out of it. No one wants that. So that's basically where it is. But what she needs to do is she needs to basically get enough support for something whilst, for, my, for me personally, keeping what she's managed to keep in place so that she respects the wishes of 18 million people who voted to leave and what that really means. And at the moment, she's, she's been on course no matter what. She is the only person who's clearly stated what she fucking wants, clearly fought for it, you know, on and on and on and on. And the whole time, fucking Labour is there, and Jeremy Corbyn specifically, literally just trying to fucking, you know, all these cunts in Labour who stood up in these, in these questions, and basically, as Theresa May's, you know, going through that she's got some sort of plan... Where basically she's going to force the EU to open the withdrawal agreement and then we're going to come to some other type of arrangement yeah, to make sure that there's no, there's no um, backstop in, the, uh, in Ireland and also that there's no hard border. That's what she's ultimately trying to say. And throughout the whole fucking thing you've got Labour fucking MPs standing up just trying to say shit that's disruptive. When really, it's not the country's interest that they're standing up and saying that for. It's the fucking Labour Party. 
they're basically just trying to say, oh yeah, you're a cunt, vote Labour, you know, or not vote Labour, but you know, you're useless, this is shit, da 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 da, you know, there is, the, Labour are not behind the country, they're not, they're, they're, they're fucking split, yeah, the leadership isn't behind Brexit, or won't come out one way or the other, they're undermining the Tories for the sake of it, political fucking, politically, for the sake of political gain. So that's one problem. Yeah, Theresa May has to be able to go back to the EU and be able to negotiate. We cannot negotiate unless we've got something that looks to the EU like it's worth them giving a concession. They will not give a concession where there's no certainty or as much certainty as possible that what they give up will lead to a deal. Agreed. So they have to fucking get it sorted in Parliament. Labour are not going to be a part of it. All they're doing is fucking politically driven shit. So within the Tories, they need to come up to something which works. And that's where they're getting to now. You know, this idea that the Brexiteers will never vote for fucking Theresa May's deal because of the backstop. And they'll, they also wanted to withhold the money. They're the two, one of the two main criteria. Right? So Theresa May, not going not gonna to withhold the money, yeah, but will insist that the fucking withdrawal agreement is reopened and the backdrop is fucking removed and there's an alternative system in place to ensure there's no hard border. Inter alternative measures. Boom. Right, you've now got basically the Brexiteers who, although they wanted to keep the money so they can hold it over the EU to make sure that we get a free trade agreement. I'll, I think the other thing they want to do is extend the uh, with, withdrawal process by year. So, and what, what Brexiteers want to do is hold the money back before the EU we agree a fucking free trade agreement. Because obviously, you know, if they if they then negotiate a fair and free trade agreement with us, uh, that means they also happen to get whatever it is, thirty six billion pounds. But what Theresa May's come back with, as I understand it, is she basically will not withhold the money. Because at the end of the day, if you're going back to the EU and you go, we're withholding the fucking money, and we want you to. Um, you know, reopen the withdrawal agreement and we want you to withdraw this backstop and we're going to basically come up with some alternative measures that will basically make sure that there's no issue but you've got three years before that actually comes into play. Now if the EU is saying with all best intentions we're never going to use the backstop you know, when it comes to negotiating how we're going to do this, we've got no intention of using the backstop. So the fact that it's got no end date is irrelevant because we're going to go with our best intents and purposes to make sure that we can resolve the issue so we never hit the backstop. Now, if they're, if they're true, if they're talking, you know, truthfully, and that's their intention, then three years to sort the problem out when they never intended after two years to hit the backstop... For them to remove the backstop, you know, with an extension to the withdrawal process, which is three years, then they, you know, they've got three fucking years to resolve it with the UK. So the fact that then there isn't actually a backstop at the end of three years, they shouldn't be, if they're, you know, if they're, if they're, if they're basically, I mean, obviously they are negotiating through their fucking teeth, but at the same time, their hands are almost tied because our parliament is so politically driven on one side and obviously fragmented on the other. So they'd be silly to give anything away. And obviously we've started it from the wrong, the wrong starting point in the very beginning, but we are where we are. So basically, with, with an extra year on the withdrawal, you know, on the withdrawal process, when you're, the EU have said, again, not in law, but they said, you know, in wording, we will do our very best. We none of us want a hard backstop. We will not be, we will 
all of us will work our hardest to make sure that we never get to the backstop because we'll have already resolved the issues before then. That's what they've already said in letters, but it's not legal. That's with a period of two years. So if we go back and offer them three years to do it, but there is no backstop. And if they accept that, Parliament will approve it. Job done. Yeah, that is a fucking reasonable and a very, very good way to go forward. It respects the, the uh, you know, what the majority of the UK voted for properly. No fucking customs union. Uh, you know, no, no uh, bowing down to the, as far as I'm aware, the laws of the EU Parliament. Uh, you know, we, we retain control of our fisheries, we retain control of our agriculture, you know, subsidies, all that sort of shit. No freedom of movement. Points-based system. Uh, or we allow immigration seasonally as and when our, our, our producers need it. And or. And. So, overall, this is a, you know exactly what we should do but these fucking cunts because it's it's labor well it's not i think it's actually got a conservative behind it as well a conservative behind it but basically what they're trying to do is through the fucking um you know the admin process the fucking the actual bureaucracy of parliament they're going to try and find a way to remove control away from theresa may Away from, yeah, Theresa May, effectively. Um, and that's all, you know, about delaying things. And then, you know, they, I believe, I don't know how it works. Maybe they get a say on what happens next. Or they can, you know, um, insist on a second referendum or whatever it is. But ultimately, it's, it will, it's designed to withdraw the power from the main party via a sort of administrational fucking, you know, morally wrong, yeah, morally wrong, but rule-based correct, but never done before. So because that's taking place, which is being voted on, you know, as we speak, and because you've got fucking Labour, who all they are driven by, you know, I wouldn't mind if they were basically, they, re they represented themselves as a whole, you know, as much as possible. Particularly, I know that, to that this cunt fucking Corbyn is sitting on the fence the whole time because he doesn't want the political fallout for basically saying what he wants. And the other thing is, he is actually a Brexiteer. You know, in his heart, he would like to leave Europe. But, you know, although there's a big part of the people who vote Labour who do want a Brexit, there's also... I think the majority who, well, I'm, I'm not actually sure what the split is, but there's a huge part of Labour that want to remain. And the fucking uh, MPs, although they're supposed to represent their constituents, most of fucking Parliament are Remainers. So, you know, I wouldn't mind if Labour had a, you know, even if it was totally, uh, you know, um, What's the word? You know, even if it was totally, uh, even if it totally disrupted, you know, the the process because the viewpoint was totally different. You know, I would, you know, I would respect that because it's basically driven by a desire of the broader party. But it's not. It's fucking Jeremy Corbyn being, you know, politically motivated. And the rest of those fucking cunts, I mean, you know, most of them standing up, really, just trying to disrupt shit. I mean, at the end of the day, what, what we don't, I mean, you know, I'm happy with a no deal. But I know that it will cost us. So I'm happy with it, but I would prefer a deal. 
but I'll take no deal and go through the consequences and I think ultimately that will probably be stronger in the long run. But people just don't have the stomach for that. So what they want is a deal where basically it respects what people want from Brexit, you know, what they meant by when they voted leave. And also we don't have the economic, short-term economic, short-term, you know, procedural issues that are going to call, cost us a bit of money and cause some, some upset. Although if you look at the trade agreements, we've got like fucking, I don't know, 43 trade agreements around the world. Yeah, which if we go to WTO rules, we need to basically then establish all those agreements, you know, when we're not part of a cut we're not part of the EU, we're not part of the customs union. And but out of those forty three I'm I'm throwing these are vaguely right, out of forty three uh, you know, agreements with different countries, we do like ninety five of of that ninety five percent of our trade with five of them. Five of the 43. And as I understand it, we've already got agreement for four, the four of the main five, and the fifth of the main five literally is, you know, we're talking like a fucking couple of weeks type stuff, a month. It's there. Yeah, so we've sorted 95% of it out. You know, in terms of what would happen on the 30th, of 29th of March, what would happen on the 30th? So at the end of the day, you know, if we do go no deal, I don't think it will be as bad as people will expect. No one uh, has any right to say they know what will happen. There is obviously some accuracy to say it will cost some people in terms of effort. There will be money to be paid. There's going to be a little bit more organisation. There will be a, a period of disruption. But nothing in terms of what, you know, nothing like the fucking collapse that people are claiming it's going to be. But if you if you haven't got the stomach for that, then vote for the deal, which I would I would prefer the deal just because, you know, it's done and it would cost people less generally. So on their behalf, I'll prefer the deal. But we're never going to get a deal unless we can go back to the EU and we can fucking put this to them this is what you need to do, this will be approved, and you need to give, the, give us this one concession. If Parliament was behind it, the EU would really be stupid to say no. And on top of that, if they did say no, bear in mind that they've already said within two years, they were never intending to hit the back backstop. So really it's a moot point that it has no end date at the backstop. They've said, you know, in many letters, we will do our very best to make sure that we agree some sort of arrangement so the backstop never gets hit within two years. So if we give them an extra year and say, right, forget the backstop, you've now got three years where we both, on our best intentions, best efforts basis, come up with an agreement and we now can leave and we've got, a, you know, you get your 36 billion and we, everything's done and we can fucking focus on something else. They can't really say no that, they can't really say no. And if they do say no, what it will do is it will cement people in this country looking at the EU saying, that is unreasonable. And all it will do is basically cement people's desire to fucking be out of the EU, beyond what they've already done in terms of the way they negotiated. But although you might not like it the way they've behaved, you can't judge them for it because they've done the right thing and we've done the wrong thing from the start in terms of the tack that we took. But Labour undermining everything the government's trying to do just for the sake of it because really what Jeremy Corbyn wants is just to fucking get a general election because he thinks he might win. As soon as he comes out one way and says, I'm voting for this, you know, we, we, want, a, we want a second re referendum or we, you know, we want to cancel Brexit. He's going to lose half his fucking support one way or the other, whichever he says. Theresa May has been consistent about what she is doing, what she supports and what she's fighting for. And up until today, she has represented that in the most fucking admir admir admirably, 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 hold on, admir admir 
admir admirably, 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 you know, way, admirable way that you could possibly imagine. And as it's gone on, I've thought more and more of her. And I've been secretly sitting here going, don't give up, don't give up, keep going, don't give up. Because she's doing it perfectly. She's doing exactly what she should do. But today, seeing her sit behind that fucking last speaker before seven o'clock, she looks totally different. And the, what I'm hoping is that she is just, you know, what I'm hoping is we'll see what the votes are now on these fucking amendments. Because one of them is there's no deal. If you vote no deal off the table, the EU has no reason to concede this backstop. And I guarantee that Labour's going to be voting no deal off the table, mostly because they think it's going to fuck, you know, the way we're handling Brexit up, and that they'll get a, they'll get a fucking shot at a general election. I mean, you can't say that's a total reason because no deal, all the all well, mo, well. 70% 70, 70 of people in Parliament think no deal is the end of the fucking universe. 30% know full well that's not the case. I've traded markets, I've traded markets for about 25 years. And I've seen in the stuff that I've traded, the countries that I focused on, shit go down. Yeah, that you would think devaluation of currency, central, well not central banks, but massive banks just going bust overnight. You know, some of the biggest companies in that whole country bouncing checks. You know, and, and, the sh and what that actually means. And what's fucking taking place afterwards. And I can tell you, and I've I've literally seen there and been there and done it, it is fucking catastrophic for that much time. And then quickly things fucking recover. And this is not that. This isn't the fucking, you know, this isn't, this isn't, um, you know, um, the Bank of England defaulting on some fucking guilt edge security. You know, this is nothing like that. This is nothing. This, all this is is going to cause some procedural problems, logistics, nego renegotiations. That's it. And some companies will get hit heavier. But overall, and it will be, uh, you know, a, a uh, you know, a, a difficult time to a degree. You know, so what? We, the, the problem at Dover and we'll have to put a fucking lorry park to the side of the M20. Whatever it is, you know, everyone will be working because the EU loses as much as we do. Everyone will be working to get shit sorted quickly. Temporary arrangements quickly onto, onto um, permanent arrangements. I... Promise, in, in, and I, I would, if I had money and there was a bet that I could make, I would bet everything I've got. If there was someone I could bet against, and who said this is going to be fucking the end of the world, and I could bet and go, I'll bet everything I own, a fucking million quid, every penny I've got, that you are wrong, and that this will not be anything like you believe it will be. And you could measure it. I guarantee I would be right. And bear in mind, I've been through this shit on way more serious issues in relative to the fucking strength of a country or an economy. And I've seen it. I've seen what looks like supposedly the end of the world uh, for reasons which are way worse than this. Way worse. And then what happens next? It's never as bad as people fucking think it's going to be. Never. Because people fear the fucking worst. So, 
Theresa May sitting behind this guy really, in my, in my impression of, you know, of reading a person, she looks fucking tired. She looks like she doesn't want to be there. And she really, you know, whatever. And I'm just hoping that she keeps a fucking grip on it. And if she does keep a grip on it, and she comes back tomorrow or the next day, and she's basically, you know... I mean, bear in mind, she's only sitting there. But it's when you're sitting there and you're not performing or you're not fucking having to put your point across that you can give away, you know, basically through your body language and how you, how you look and how you, literally how you behave, how you respond to shit. You can give away, you know, an impression of what your status is. And today is the first time I've seen her where she basically looks... really under the cosh and I, I hope that fucking you know she gets some sleep tonight see what these votes are because obviously these votes are fucking critical obviously the time I've been talking I can I'll, re I'll refresh this and I'll have a, we'll have all the answers but if they voted to take no deal off the table we haven't got a fucking Theresa May's got no chance to get a concession from the EU So, we, we as a country have to win all these stupid fucking amendments that these fucking idiots are putting in. Either to, either to, either to, for political gain to undermine the, the uh, government or because they want to undermine Brexit. So ultimately they'll put the amendment in because, you know, the next two steps down the road is cancel it or second referendum, yes or no. Or vote on the deal. No, we don't like the deal. No, we don't want to leave. And that is not what the fucking country voted for. So what I hope is that she comes out, that these fucking votes are won, won the way, you know, i.e. they don't vote no deal off the table at this point. So she has a time, because they can vote no deal off the table any Try to, any time. But if they vote no deal off the table today, just before she gets the fucking support where the Brexiteers support the government, the DUP supports the government because they're going to basically just take the fucking backstop out, alternate uh, arrangements, give them an extra year to sort it, go back to the EU, negotiate. You know, where, if the EU says yes, there's a very good chance we're going to pass it, job done, deal done. If they fucking vote no deal, no possibility, we're not, we're not going to allow a no deal today. Her fucking trip to the EU and the fact that, you know, there's a consensus looming will be wasted. And that's... What I'm fucked best partly, and so I'm hoping she she wins this vote, or we or they win this vote, and then she can push this consensus, and then go to the EU and just put it there, as I've explained, and then they'd be stupid to say no. Really, and if they did, it would just really cement people's fucking. Uh, you know, distaste of the EU, of the EU in a way which isn't necessarily valid, but it would be at this point if they turn that down and basically that's the deal done and everything sorted and all they need to do is stick to their word to put best efforts in to get the fucking you know Northern Ireland, Southern Ireland situation sorted within three years. If they won't accept that as a reasonable time to sort it. then that's not reasonable. And that, basically, I would say, deserves some level of fucking, you know, distaste. But she can't go and do that to them because the EU cannot give any concession while it would be like giving away something for nothing. Because the whole time Parliament can't agree, why would you... Why would you weaken your negotiating position when you know that it's not going to go, it's, the, the chances are it's not going to get anywhere. So you're giving it up for nothing. 
and if they vote no deal off the table now, then then basically the EU knows all it has to do is sit there and stay there and say nothing and basically view the via the political fucking wranglings and stupid shit going on that ultimately Brexit will get fucking cancelled. Now the, the, the spanner in the works to that is if they do have a fucking second, second referendum yeah and there'll be questions on there that there has to be a couple of questions. One is do you support a deal? Yeah? And they'd have to do it quickly. They, they won't have time to do it before the 29th of March. So they'd have to extend Article 50. They'll have to have a second referendum and it will say, do you support the deal? Yes or no? And if it's uh, no, because obviously if the country comes forward and say, yes, we support the deal, whatever framework it is, and it will be probably this consensus that Theresa May is forming now, if it's yes, Labour, and the country comes back and votes yes on the deal, then the Labour MPs are fucking duty-bound to, to put it through. But if the country comes back and goes, no, we don't like that deal, then the next question on that referendum will be, do you want to leave? And then basically the country will vote, yes, we want to leave, or no, we don't. And the spanner in the works is, if they put that fucking referendum through again, that the country votes yes again, we do want to leave. And then what it does is it just makes them all look like fucking idiots. Because that's what we voted for in the first place. Finding within the withdrawal agreement, or could it be something attached to the withdrawal agreement? I think that they have been very clear that this needs to be reopen that treaty and start rewriting it. Something the EU has said time and time again, and are saying right now in capitals around Europe, they are not prepared to do. But that—that that is what the.